Hello and welcome back to the BMW 12.0 challenge in iRacing and finally it's a chance to redeem myself after last week's disastrous error which saw me wipe out half the field at Watkins Glen. Now that crash seven days ago has really dented my confidence so of all the tracks we could be coming to this week Long Beach Street Circuit is certainly not the one I would have chosen. But there's no point in stressing about what happened last week. I've just got to forget about that, dust myself down and move on. And that's what we're doing today. And we're going to start this race from seventh on the grid. So a really good qualifying session, particularly in a highly competitive single split field. And that qualifying time I did was the first lap I've done in the 127s, actually. All through practice, I couldn't get below 128.0. So there are certainly some encouraging signs, but before we even get to the green light, we've got to worry about this formation lap. And in particular, the last hairpin at Long Beach. It's caused so many problems in races already this week. And you might have seen on the race chat just before we joined the grid that several of the drivers were urging everyone to come through a single file. That really is the only way you can all get around. And thankfully, we've all made it through cleanly. Oh, I've completely messed up my timing on the throttle there as the lights went green and that's allowed Kalinowski to charge by on the outside. And there's already a really big gap to the pack behind though, so I'm going to break really early coming into turn one. I don't want to get too close to any of these guys in front of me. It's really tight. To be fair though, they've all made it through. But it's going to get even tighter here and it looks like there might be a bit of congestion. Yeah, there is. There's a cloud of smoke so someone spun off. Is the room for us to get around the outside? We do graze Kim in front, but I don't think there was enough contact to get any instant points. Looks like we've got away with that. Uh, I don't know how many places we've gained though. It was so crowded as we came through there. I couldn't see if it was one or two cars that spun out to the right of us. So I guess we're just going to have to wait until the end of the first lap. We can see where we are on the leaderboard. For now, it says we're seventh. I suspect we might be in sixth. I'm just being so cautious on the throttle, though, as we come around these corners while we wait for the tyres to get up to temperature. The last thing I want is a repeat of what happened last week at Watkins Glen when I just got a bit too greedy on the gas without the tyres being warm enough and all hell broke loose. And Kim's run it a little bit hot into that right-hander there. I don't think we're going to get around him, but we will still gain a position anyway because one of the other front runners has spun out. Uh, the yellow flag is still being waved here. Do you think there's been another incident up front? Or is it just for that spin behind us? I think it might have been for the crash behind us. So, okay, we're headed up to complete the first lap. So let's keep our eyes on the leaderboard. Where are we? Fifth place. Right, let's go back and check out the replay to see what happened on lap one. And we're going to have to go all the way back to the formation lap because things got really messy coming into this hairpin. I was one of the last drivers to emerge unscathed. Behind me, it all got rather unpleasant rather quickly. And in particular, keep your eye on the number 14. He was really unlucky, did nothing wrong and ends up getting tipped on his side and then rammed repeatedly as all the other drivers are in a hurry to get onto the start and finish straight. Let's just watch it again from his cockpit and you'll see me two cars ahead. I'm the number 13, so that's how close I came to being involved in this. But yeah, what could you do differently here? He had to slow down because of the congestion and then all of a sudden someone in a hurry tries to take him on the inside, tips him onto his side and from then on in he's just getting rammed by everyone who comes by. While that was going on, the leading pack were hurtling towards turn one. And in particular, keep your eye on the orange number three, Tukowski. He made a move up the inside. And although he had loads of space given to him, that space quickly disappeared. And he gets spun round and spun out. And that is the incident that causes all the congestion. Just look at the carnage it's caused in the background. As we watch the blue number six car get all out of shape, lose the rear completely. And it's the concrete wall that saves him from a spin. Yeah, we can just go back and view this incident from another angle and we can see just how many cars got involved. In particular, I feel really sorry for the number four. Again, he's done nothing wrong. He's got to stop. He can't go anywhere. But yeah, all the other cars behind just keep plowing into him. First of all, he gets hit and spun around. Then he gets hit again. Then he gets hit again. Really not good. One final look at this incident from the chopper and this time keep your eye on Kalinowski, the number eight. He ends up going through the flower bed to try and get back on the track in front of the other cars. So that's definitely the most unique line you'll see through that section of turns today. 
And then towards the end of the lap, we gained one more position. And once again, we see Tokarski. He's already caused chaos once this lap. And he almost does it again. He loses the rear, slides into the concrete wall. And for a moment, I think he's going to reverse into the oncoming traffic. Thankfully, he thinks better of it. The funniest thing about this is that it was actually Tokarski on the pre-race chat who was most vocal about everyone taking it easy on lap one. And we've seen two incidents, both caused by him. And now we're going to see a third look as he tries to barge his way through the inside in the hairpin and ends up causing even more carnage. Got a gap of 1.2 seconds both in front and behind me now, which actually I'm quite grateful of because it gives me a bit of breathing room to find some sort of rhythm as we start lap three. But we might have lost someone else up front. Yeah, look, it's the green BMW and I'm pretty sure that's the race leader. I'm sure it was a green car that was setting the pace out front. So if that's the case, we're up to fourth place and we've lost our race leader. Uh, starting to feel a bit more confident with the tyres now as well. Guessing they might be up to temperature because it does feel like there's a little bit more grip to be found now. Normally I'd start pushing a little bit harder but as we're in such a good position I'm not going to push too hard. I'm quite happy tucking in behind Kim for now. We seem to be keeping with him. Got a gap of a second to Kalinowski behind. Yeah, we're getting a lot closer to Kim around this section of the track. Just want to keep some distance coming into this hairpin. So easy to mistime it and tap someone who oversteered a little bit there. So we're going to lose a bit of time on exit. And that's brought Kalinowski a little bit closer behind. He's just half a second back now. But yeah, there's the confirmation. We did lose the race leader and we are in fourth place. Oh, just drifting a little bit hot into T1 and we touch the wall and we take a huge hit from Kalinowski who's in a hurry to get by. Oh, he was ruthless then. He pounced on my mistake and he charged past, clipping us in the process. We've picked up our first incident points. And we've lost a position. Yeah, that was a careless error from me. I don't think I broke too late, but I think I've just got my line. I've got my entry a bit wrong into T1. We didn't hit the barrier too hard, but the car is feeling a little bit strange now. I worry that I might have picked up some damage. It's just feeling a bit unstable, so I'm going to take it very easy here. Just so I don't push it too hard. Oh, the second that I put the brakes on, the car just veered to the left then and took me right into the wall. So yeah, we've definitely got big damage problems here. Oh, and it was really difficult to steer it around that hairpin as well. So we've got big problems here. And we've still got another five or six laps to go, so this is going to be difficult now. The car really isn't handling well, and I've got to be so careful on the brakes, because the last time I was heavy on the brakes, it just dragged off to the left. So let's take it really carefully around here. As we see Kim running a little bit hot, he clips the wall. Oh, and I've taken another punt from behind. Who is that? That's another four instant points. And that looks like... Dalvai, yeah it is, the green BMW that we saw crash out earlier who was leading the race, Dalvai. So he looks eager to get by and if he's willing to get that close to me and punt me like that, I might just let him through. He's certainly got more pace than me. And we've gained eight instant points already so I don't want any more. So I think once we get around this corner, I'm just going to keep to the left. Hopefully we can invite him to make a move up the inside. I'm not going to get on the gas too early. 
That'll give him a bit more speed. And yeah, he is going to have a look up the inside. So I'm going to veer over to the left and yield this position. I think that'll be safest. Once again, big trouble through the hairpin. It's so difficult to steer this car now with the damage that I've picked up. So having seen Dalvai get back around us, let's go back a few laps and check out the replay to see what happened to him in the first place. And look at the lead he's built up in the space of two laps. He's got an advantage of several seconds, but he throws it all away by getting turn one completely wrong, breaking way too late. And if it's good enough for the leader, it's more than good enough for me because the next lap I do exactly the same thing. And then look at Kalinowski, really whacks me from behind then. I suspect that's what caused the damage. Not my contact with the tyre wall, it was the contact from Kalinowski as he barged his way past me. Look how close Dalvai is now. He's right on the tail of Kim. But I'm sure he's being held up. Because Dalvai should be so much faster. Judging by that pace he was running earlier in the race. I think he's just finding it difficult to find a way through. Kim not being quite as giving as I was. When it comes to the position. Although Dalvai's having a look up the inside now. This could be it. Kim's run really wide, so that's going to give me a chance to close the gap on Kim. I'm pretty sure that'll be the last we'll see of Dalvai. I think he's got the pace to uh, leave us. But we've got a couple of laps still to go, so if I can just get behind Kim, who knows what might happen. Oh, and that's what happens. Kim loses it. I've got nowhere to go. Contact was inevitable there company on the outside as well and there's more contact oh I was lucky I was on the inside of that because I've survived it but I think that Stefan who was alongside me might have crashed out oh the last message that you want to see when you're heading into that hairpin is that you're three wide and that's what we were then but we've survived it just yeah let's look at the replay and I really hope that wasn't too aggressive a move by me on Stefan there we saw Kim in front just lose control. I had nowhere to go there. I was always going to hit him. But then Stefan came out of nowhere around the outside. I was just trying to hold the inside line that I had. And I don't think I could have done anything differently there. And in fact, look at Stefan. He's completely out of track limits there. So that probably wasn't a fair pass anyway. And other than slamming on the brakes and stopping completely, I don't think there's anything else that I could have done to avoid the contact with Stefan there. So hopefully... That will just be viewed as a racing incident. White flag, oh, I've never been so pleased to see the white flag before. We've only got one more lap to hold on. And if we can hang on for fifth place, that will be an astonishing result. iRacing have given us the number 13 plate. They didn't fancy us for a top 10 finish even. But we're on the verge of getting a top five. Just one lap to hold on. Can't make any more mistakes now. Kim is closing behind. It's below a second. So he's obviously recovered after that spin. Point 0.7 of a second the gap now. I just need to concentrate on what's ahead though. But something's happened around this corner. I can't see where yet, but the yellow flags are out. And there's two cars right in the middle of the track. I don't know which way to go. I think we just about escaped. No, we must have had some contact because we've picked up four more incident points. That's up to 16, so we're only one away from a DQ now. We've got to be really careful. We can't afford to touch a wall, touch another car or anything. We've only got a couple of turns left, including the hairpin. Kim's right behind me still. Just about crept around the hairpin without grazing the wall. And I think we've done enough 
But did we gain another position or two from that crash as well? We did! We finished fourth! Oh, that's an outstanding result. To get a fourth place finish in a strong single split field such as this one. Safety rating will certainly take a hit with 16 incident points, but I'm not going to worry about that now. I'm going to celebrate the fourth place finish. But yeah, let's just check out the replay and see what caused that incident on the final lap. And it's the number eight, Kalinowski again. He's been in a rush all race and he's coming up to a lap driver and just completely wipes him out. And let's stay with this camera angle for a little bit longer because I'm going to appear in the background shortly. And I just didn't know where to go. There was two cars blocking both lines. Oh, and look at the back marker blinking too. So he obviously had ping issues as well. So that didn't help me either. There's nothing I could have done to avoid that contact when he was blinking on or off screen. And now we're riding on board with Kalinowski and look how impatient he is. That's a lap driver, so there's absolutely no need to be pushing him that hard. Surely you just bide your time and then pass him on the straight. But what we saw as early as the first lap, what a rush Kalinowski was in when he drove across the flower bed to uh, try and get back running as quickly as we can. But it's cost him dear there, it's cost him a podium finish. However, it's given me a fourth place, which I'm delighted with. And more important than that is the 69 championship points it earns me. That's the best haul I've had this season in the BMW 12.0 challenge. So what a difference a week makes. I was feeling so low seven days ago after that disastrous Watkins Glen race. But today I'm feeling far happier and I've got a bit of my confidence back as well. We've battled really well in a single split field and we've come away with our best performance of the season. So I'm pleased to end my iRacing video this week on a much happier note. I hope you've enjoyed watching and I'll be back again for round 10 next week. Cheers.